Hi, my name's Bob, and I'm going to light up your life. <laughs> I've, I've just kind of always wanted to say that. We have a three-step controller here for a stepped daylighting system. The sensor, which is a LS290 Charlie version 2, is on the back of the board, and then in here will be our area. Now first of all I'd like to thank the person who built this board which we will use for much fun and entertainment today. It is a Mr. Glenn Wallace so shout out to Glenn for building this killer thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to use to set up a Title 24 Part 6 compliant daylighting system. First of all you will need a light meter. You will have to have one of these. Secondly you're going to want a pocket calculator and if you're me you get to go with the gusto and have a remote control daylight source that you can dim up and down and use to set this rig last but not least you're going to want the manufacturers instructions so Let's see how we set one of these up, shall we? I just thought I might show you the lighting control, which you can't see me up against, um, to let you know this is what the artificial daylighting looks like in this room. You just need to make sure you position this properly. If you're putting it in a skylight well, don't put it on the north side and all this stuff where it might catch in some way shape fashion or form a straight shot at the sun according to the instructions right here on the edge of this lens you're going out 45 degrees from this plane alright you have a cone shape that's defined by 30 degree angles you want to point this at a window where it covers the entire window. Not a portion of the window, but the entire window. But it must not be positioned so that you get direct sunlight impinging on it, even if it's diffused by something with film or a haze factor. Okay? And I don't recommend going over 5,000. Now there's three jumper positions in here. You've got 30, I'm sorry, 3 to 300, 30 to 3,000, and then you have a top range. I'm going to recommend to you that you do not exceed 5,000 foot candles at the top end of your top range. You set this with a jumper in here, and you set the controller to match it. If you do this properly, you will have no problems with this system. But remember, one of the more difficult things about setting up a daylighting system is positioning the sensor. It's critical as to whether it's going to work properly or not. Let's take a look at setting up a stepped daylighting system. Now you might think that a stepped daylighting system such as this would be of little use nowadays in the state of California, but you'd be wrong because people still like to use track lighting and you're allowed to step track lighting. In fact it only requires one step but you're going to want more than that because you need to meet your daylighting specifications. What we have here is a watt stopper BT203 power pack. It connects to an LCO203 controller to power it up and if you follow the manufacturer's instructions, which you must have, you can't get anywhere with these products without very carefully following the instructions, you can see how to wire up the low voltage devices, such as this. This is also a watt stopper uh, ceiling mount aux sensor, and I doubt if you can see it, but its little red light is indicating that it's working. This controller adds an extra one minute to whatever delay you've put into the low voltage aux sensor and that's kind of a nice thing for a step system because the one thing you don't want them to do is go off on people. Another thing you don't want them to do 
at least as far as I'm concerned, and it also makes this much easier to deal with, is you don't want automatic on operation. You don't want the lights to come on when people enter the area and trip the aux sensor. All right? You want them to have to hit a button. Now let's talk about the buttons. We have a button marked auto that puts it in automatic operation. Now it's, it's doing daylighting and we'll show you that in a second. But that just latches it into auto. We have a second button marked on off. Okay? And that indeed turns it on and off. But this button's a problem and we'll talk about that at the end of this. And then we have this large button, the one everybody wants to hit. Well, believe it or not, the manufacturer's instructions do not have you wiring the large button up. So let me give you my advice. Place the unit when you program it in manual on. Then you can use this button wired into what's called the door switch input to the controller. Then you can wire as many push buttons onto that contact as you wish and put area controls throughout the room. It's a little hard to see, but this door switch input toggles you between auto operation and off, which is what you want. You don't want to override the daylighting set point. When you hit this on-off switch, that's what happens. At least the way it's shown wired, we'll show you how to fix that for total Title 24 Part 6 compliance in the state of California. First thing you need to know is how does an open loop system work? Well, the sensor is actually located on the back of this board. Okay, This would be our task area up front. We've got a light meter that we're going to need to use to set this up. What you need to tell the controller right off the bat is one, I want you in manual operation, not auto on, and two, you need to tell it how much light it's seeing at its task area when it's seeing a certain amount of light at its sensor because these two things will be different. So you tell the controller that and it develops what I believe they call in their instructions the daylighting factor. I like to call it a sensor ratio. It's the ratio of the outdoor sensor. This is an open loop system. So the sensor is looking outdoors. That's an important point. The sensor is looking outdoors and it's trying to make its best guess as to where to put the lights inside. So the controller has to know how much light's impinging on this sensor when you're getting so much light at your task surface. So therefore it can calculate where to put the daylighting set points. Speaking of which, when you're doing your daylighting set points, this controller has right, left, and up and down buttons. Wattstopper has made it very easy to enter test mode. You simply repeatedly hit the down button until it says enter test mode. You tell it yes. It's going to stay there for, I believe, 10 minutes, giving you time to check out your set points or, in this case, just check for basic operation of the unit. I'm going to put a little light on the sensor and see how that works. Okay, and a little more, and a little more. And you can see that we have three daylighting set points in here. When we're in test mode, all the time delays are removed. Also, none of the buttons do anything anymore. So when you go into test mode, all you're doing is checking to see the response of the daylighting action. Now let's go out, and it'll go back into normal operation, and then we will talk some more. Uh, low voltage wiring, as I stated, everything just like in the instructions with the exception of using this door switch input in manual on mode, which gives you a button here and as many buttons in the room as you wish. So you can put a button at every source of egress and all it needs to be is a push button. We also have a demand response input. We'll talk about this. The way you do demand response with this unit is you modify the daylighting set points so that they switch the stages on at different 
intensities of sunlight. 